from Serbia. I was born in Croatia. So well, that's very tip very typical <laughs> Yugoslav background. Yes, of course. Yes, it is. So uh, I watched your doc document. Do you have any more questions for me, or you can ask no, them? No, what, are you what are you planning to do with this interview? I'm planning to uh, use your statements to edit your statement to cut some. Are you posts. recording this at the moment? Yes, yes, I'm recording everything. You can okay, see it. Yeah. I think you can see it uh, in your on your screen that the meeting has been oh, recorded. Um, you can't see it. No, I never. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's fine by okay, me. I okay, okay. I'm 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 recording this. Uh, so if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Absolutely no. Um, I do not hesitate. But go ahead. And um, so you you're going to do something about the war, and yes. you're going to look at Mostar. Uh, at Mostar, but also on Sarajevo, Kosovo, and every conflict in, in former Yugoslavia, and you are the man with great experience, first-hand experience. So yeah, I think I, a I time ago now. yes, uh, and uh, I'll talk to some politicians from that time, to reporters such as you, uh, some victims, refugees, all kinds of people to analyze what so happened. Luck, it's a good and, idea. Yeah. And uh, and uh, your your documentary, for example, is called Unfinished Business. So when you look back thirty years now, uh, do you think do you think that we in the Balkans still have some unfinished businesses here? Well, I'm aware that the scars of the war. You know what? I'm gonna do this without these okay these you can... headphones because I, okay. I I haven't worked out quite how to use them. They're... Okay, you, I I hear you very well. Is that all right? Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, or, so just to start again, you know, I'm not in, as in contact with the former Yugoslavia as I like to be, but uh, a few years ago, I was back in Mostar where people there were, you know, very kindly giving me an award. And it was clear that, you know, the scars of the war after many years are still there. People you know, Mostar as a city is still, there are no walls, but in people's heads, there are lots of divisions. So I think that in, in Bosnia, particularly, the scars of the war continue. And, you know, something as intense and as painful as those years of war throughout the former Yugoslavia is inevitably going to leave a lot of scars. And in those parts of um, well, Bosnia and other places as well where there hasn't been as much economic progress as people wanted, um, then it's, you know, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult for another generation. But I do think that one of the legacies of wars like that is that people remember or have grown up being told how bad it was and therefore don't have the desire to pick up a gun in the way that 30 years ago, sadly, a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's, let's see the new states. For example, Bosnia is far from function, functional state. Uh, Serbia has some, prob some problems, great problems for, for our country, not for me personally, but for our country with Kosovo. Kosovo also yeah. has problems. It does not have the real international recognition. As a, as, a, as a state. So uh, international community intervened, militarily, politically, economically after the war, of course, but there are some uh, unfinished business. They, they did not uh, went through the, through the process all the way down. Yeah, I think they, you know, they intervened at the end of the war in, in Bosnia, having been under pressure you know, the powerful countries of Europe and the US as well, and the Russians, um, of course, involved in Kosovo later on. Um, they'd been under pressure for some years to intervene and they decided it just wasn't necessary. As James Baker, the US Secretary of State, uh, famously said, we don't have a dog in that fight. But when they did intervene, then there was a question of, of what happens after that and I think to a large degree of course the, for quite a few years in Bosnia there was uh, the the cull built mechanism the that international 
um, format for trying to do business, but they wanted to get people back to running their own affairs. And, you know, so there was a limit to what they could do. I do think that the, I know it was a painful process, but the, the process of the war crimes tribunal in The Hague was important in terms mm -hmm. of, of letting people know what happened and sure. giving people the chance to, to bear witness. Now, I was a witness myself in four separate trials uh, at, in The Hague. And, you know, from my point of view, it was an important thing to do. But I think also for the successor countries of former Yugoslavia, <laughs> that it was also, uh, I think, a, an important process. You, you've missed the uh, uh, revolution in Egypt because of the Hague. Yeah, no, it wasn't. I didn't miss uh, the Hague. Uh, sorry, I didn't miss the Egyptian revolution because of the Hague. I missed the Tunisian, ah, Tunisian uh, revolution because yeah. the actual, the active part of the Tunisian revolution was happening at that time. Well, I had the job that I still have, which is the Middle East editor at the BBC. And uh, I was testifying at the Hague in the trial of, who was Mladic, I think. Um, and all that was going on. I used to look at it in the TV in the evening in the hotel in The Hague. And uh, just very shortly after that, of course, the revolution started up in, in Egypt. But, you know, even though I had this new job in the Middle East, relatively new, I was very um, determined to finish my testimony and do what was necessary in that trial. Mm -hmm. uh Let's back to Yugoslavia for a moment. Uh, when you look back and when you look at us now as much as you can, uh, are you an optimist? Can we, can we, can we live, can we live uh, at least uh, side by side, if not together? You know, if in Western Europe we were able to get over the Second World War and we're just approaching the 75th anniversary of VE Day, marking victory over Germany, then if we can, in particularly in Western and Central Europe, um, get over that legacy, and it has been difficult for some people, and here in Britain particularly, you know, we obsess for way too much about the Second World War. Uh, but if we can do that on this side of Europe, I don't see why it's not possible in, in the Balkans. I think that when they're are economic problems, then it's more difficult because people have time on their hands to, to brood about what happened. As I said, I am not, I don't follow things like I did. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that having been in a reporter in conflicts around the world for many, many years, not just in the former Yugoslavia, I do believe that it's possible for countries to reconcile afterwards. I don't think it's easy. I think it can take a process of generations, but you know, the war started 30 years ago. So to even remember the war, you've got to be what, approaching 40 probably, uh, and to have participated in the war, well, you've got to be in your 50s. Uh, I'm 60 now and I was a young man when it was all going on. So, uh, you know, time heals eventually. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, but the European Union or Community for Coal was formed a few years after the Second World War. Uh, Europe in the 60s was already pretty much integrated, and we in the Balkans, 30 years after the start of the war, we are in some sort of uh, cold peace. Mm. We, have, we have many problems. We have many problems, for example, my country with Montenegro, with Bosnia, with Kosovo, of course, with Macedonia, even with Croatia for, for, <laughs> for decades. So 30 years on didn't happen to work for us. Hey, no, no, no one ever said it was going to be easy. I think particularly there's something about the nature of a war between peoples who were part of one country and then split up, which is particularly bitter uh, because as well as having to deal with the legacy of the war, the people who were killed, the ethnic cleansing, the brutality, as well as that, people have to deal with the formation of a new country. 
and all of that is really, really difficult. Uh, and maybe I'm being a little bit naive and hoping that things are going better than perhaps they are, and you're a much better judge of that than I am. But, uh, you know, I remember what it was like in former Yugoslavia through the war. I was there in 91 in, um, in the border between Croatia and Serbia, in Borovoselo, in the fighting there. I was in Vukovar. We got in through a cornfield um, when it was being shelled, when the town was in pieces and later on in Sarajevo during the siege and Mostar and Kosovo. I mean, you name it. Um, I saw, I really saw the whole war and I saw so many bodies and so much suffering, so much killing uh, that anything is better than that. So count your blessings. It could be, could be a lot worse. I do think though that, yeah, maybe Europe should have, the rest of Europe, the, uh, more peaceful parts of Europe should have done more after the war to help rebuild, to get involved in a job of nation building. Perhaps they should have done that, done more than they did. Uh, they were always, as I said, reluctant to get involved in the first place. So, well, you know, it could have been, I, no one is perfect in this process. Well, thank you very much for this. Uh, I can pause recording now so we can chat for a few minutes privately. Okay, yeah.